Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to take the very same problem we did before and use it to develop a general equation for what we call a compound thin lens problem. So two lenses, two thin lenses placed close together and be able to calculate the position of the final image based upon putting an object in front of the lenses and knowing the focal lengths of the two lenses. So the only things we know when we go into the problem is we know the object distance we know the focal length of the first lens, focal length of the second lens. We know the distance between the two lenses. And from that, we should be able to calculate a general equation for the position of the final image based upon a what we call a compound thin lens problem. All right, so we use the lens equation again right here in terms of the first and second lens. So we have S1 prime is equal to S1 F1 divided by S1 minus F1. We also have that for the second problem, so second lens, so S2 prime is equal to S2 F2 divided by S2 minus F2. Now, what we're ultimately after is we're ultimately after this number right here, S2 prime. But we don't know what S2 would be, and we do know what F2 is, but we don't know what S2 is, so we have to somehow replace S2 by in terms of S1 and D. We have that right over here. We can replace S2 by this quantity right here. So this can now be written instead of S2, we can write minus, or actually what we can do here, instead of writing it like this, we can say that S2 is equal to D minus S1 prime. So just switching it around or simply applying the negative inside the parentheses. So if we do that, this equation now becomes S2 can be replaced by D minus S1 prime multiplied times F2 divided by S2, which again can be replaced by D minus S1 prime minus F2. All right, now we have one more thing to do. We don't know yet what S1 prime is, but S1 prime can be replaced by this. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is equal to D minus S1 prime, which is S1 F1 divided by S1 minus F1, and the whole thing multiplied times F2, and that divided by the denominator, which is D minus F2, I can go ahead and put the F2 first, and then minus S1 prime, which would be minus this quantity, which is S1 F1 divided by S1 minus F1. Whoop. And let me take this equal sign and place it over there. So that's the position S2 prime of the final image and that will of course be relative to the second lens. We can probably write this a little bit different but hey that's good enough. We'll leave it like that. So that would be our equation. Very good. So the next step now would be to check to see if we have this correct. So if we plug in the same values as before we should get the same answer that we got before, 8.75 centimeters for the position of the second image. So let's see if that works out correctly. So let's plug in all the numbers. So this is equal to D, what's 5 centimeters, so that's 5 minus S1 F1, S1 F1. Okay, I can go ahead and probably calculate that separately. So this would be S1, which is 50 times F1, which is 30 divided by 50 minus 30, which is equal to 1500 divided by 20, which is 75. So this whole fraction right here becomes 75, so 5 minus 75, and the whole thing multiplied times F2, which is equal to 10, divided by D, which is 5, minus F2, which is 10, minus, again, the same fraction right here, which is 75. All right, simplifying this, see what we get. We get 5 minus 75, that's minus 70 times 10, which is minus 700, divided by 5 minus 10, that is minus 5, minus 75 is minus 80, and it looks like that's the same numbers I got before. See, 700 divided by 80, and sure enough, that's 8.75 centimeters. So what we have now is we have the general equation to find the image caused by two lenses. We have the focal length of both lenses. We have the distance between the lenses and the position but, or the distance between the object and the first lens. And that allows us to find 
the image of the second lens in a general way. Now, what would happen if D goes to zero? Well, when D goes to zero, uh, let's see here. Let's try that. When D goes to zero, we get a slightly different equation, don't we? So if D is equal to zero, what will this equation become? All right, let's try that. So we have S2 prime. S2 prime is equal to, that goes to zero. So we have minus S1 F1 F2 divided by S1 minus F1 and the whole thing divided by what's in the denominator which would be minus F2 minus S1 F1 divided by S1 minus F1. All right, we could probably simplify that a little bit more. Let's see here, if we write the denominator over a common denominator, ah, we'll leave that till the end. That will be for another video. All right, so that would be the case where d is equal to zero, and we're going to use that later on to actually help us derive a more general equation for any compound lens problem, and especially when in the limit when d goes to zero. So we'll see how that works later. All right, and that's how we do that.